I didn't feel good about myself if I wasn't doing everything I could to be the best version of myself. If I felt like I left anything on the table, um, it would eat away at me. I wouldn't be able to look myself in the mirror. Right? So the reason why I can retire now and be completely comfortable about it because I know that I've done everything I could to be the best basketball player I could be. Um, and so yeah, that's where it comes from for me. You can't leave any stone unturned. I've been doing shit my way uh, Or the highway And in the driveway It's a nice range Cause I grind through the climb I invite pain You never hear me bitch Nah, I don't complain Just gotta flip the switch And you can go and obtain Yeah, you know it It's funny like for me The mentality is a really simple one In a sense that the confidence Comes from preparation You know, so when the game's on a line I'm not asking myself to do something That I haven't done thousands of times Before right so when I prepare, I know what I'm capable of doing. I know what I'm comfortable doing, and I know why. I'm not comfortable doing alright, and so in those moments, if it looks like I'm ice cold or not nervous, it's because I've done it thousands of times before, so it's one more time. Well, I mean overall, you know the idea is a very simple one, and you know, the Mamba mentality simply means trying to be the best version of yourself. That's what the mentality means. It means every day you know you're trying to become better, and it's a constant quest. It's an infinite quest, so starting at the age of two when I first started playing the game and on and on and on, I always ask questions. I always try to get better every single day, learn more, learn more. Okay, so when we talk about the Mamba mentality you have your exhibition today starting in Shanghai right, also we've been talking about this whole tour with young kids that are 5, 10, 15, 20, we've been. We just did a Kobe Academy right now. We talk about being passionate, being obsessive, being relentless, being resilient, and being fearless. These are the five pillars of the Mamba mentality, so we'll kind of break that down today. The first one is to be passionate. You know, what is that? Is there a, is there a moment where you can define your passion for the game, or was it just something accumulated over time? Well, I mean, you know the passion came from the love for the game, you know I loved everything about it. Like the smell of the ball. You love the smell of the ball? Yes, the ball. You know the smell of like brand new sneakers, and like the sound, the ball makes when it hits the ground. Yeah, the ball going through the net. Like all those things I love, and so the passion comes from that because once you have that love, you just want to be a part of this thing all the time. When you talk about this love, when does it develop? Were you? Did you like it when you were five, or is it something that kind of gradually? It was two. I was born, and I was born to play basketball you know what I mean, and I played a lot of different sports, but nothing brought me the sense of peace and escape, you know, that the game of basketball does. Is it an escape when you get on the court? Is that your Zen time? Your solitude time? Yeah. You know I was applying that even while I was playing just in life outside of the game and even more so now. You know, in building a business and all those things, you know, kind of culture you want to have, and all those things are directly learned from the game of basketball to me. How so? Because there are life lessons that are within the game like communications, like unselfishness, like attention to detail and empathy and compassion like all those things are in the game and as an athlete, if we are aware of those things it helps us become better human, human beings. Next up is the next pillar to be obsessive. Obsessive, that's I think, I think a lot of people equate that with you. You know Kobe is obsessive in a lot of things. We've been doing this for what 8 years now, Asia Tour. You know I've been with you for a long way. The one moment that stands out, out of we've done, I don't know how many that we've done. We've done way 800 events. The one time was 4 a.m. We went out to practice at 4 a.m., and that was your idea to do it but and then you know all these Nike people are like no 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 let's not, let's not do that and then you're like let's do it at 4 a.m., so you've got security, you've got brand marketing, sports marketing going no 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 let's not do it. You're like, let's do it because that's your sustenance. I mean to me it just makes complete sense. Okay, so if, if your job is to try to be the best basketball player you can be. Right. 
To do that, you have to practice. You have to train, right? You want to train as much as you can as often as you can. So if you get up at 10 in the morning, train at 11 o'clock, right, 12 o'clock, say 12 o'clock, train at 12 o'clock. Train for 2 hours, 12 to 2 you have to let your body recover, so you eat, recover whatever you get back out you train start training again at 6, train from 6 to 8 right and now you go home and shower, you eat dinner, you go to bed. You wake up and do it again. Right, those are two sessions. Right now, imagine you wake up at 3 o'clock you train at 4 o'clock. You go 4 to 6 o'clock come home, breakfast, relax, so now you're back at it again 9 to 11 o'clock right, relax, and now you're back at it again 2 to 4 o'clock, and now you're back at it again you know 7 to 9 o'clock, look how much more training I have done by simply starting at 4 right. And so now you do that and as the years go on the separation that you have with your competitors and your peers just grows larger and larger and larger and larger and larger, and by year 5 or 6 doesn't matter. What kind of work they're doing this summer they're never going to catch up because they're 5 years behind so it makes sense to get up and start your day early because you can get more work in. Is that genetic or is that something you ingrained and trained yourself? Who taught you that? No, it was just like you that for me, it was, it was just common sense like I can, if I just start earlier, I can train more hours, and I know the other guys aren't doing it because I know what their training schedule is. Right so I know if I do this consistently over time is, the gap is just going to widen and widen and widen and widen, and they won't be able to get that back. So for me it was just common sense. I'm like thinking, how can I get an advantage? Oh, start earlier, yeah, let's do that. When did you start doing that? Man, like in high school. We start, my first class on high school was 7 colon 0 0, 7 colon 45, I usually get to the gym around 5 a.m., and I'd play before school, and then the school starts. So, just you and your coach? Just me, my coach, and sometimes it would just be me and the janitor who's still there today, and then I play at lunchtime. It's just a matter of what's important to you. What's important to you for whatever reason you know I felt like I didn't feel good about myself if I wasn't doing everything I could to be the best version of myself. If I felt like I left anything on a table, it would eat away at me, I wouldn't be able to look myself in the mirror, right? So the reason why I can retire now and be completely comfortable about it because I know that I've done everything I could to be the best basketball player I could be and so that's where it comes from for me. You can't leave any stone unturned. The most important thing is to try and inspire people so that they can be great in whatever they want to do. Everything negative, pressure, challenges is all an opportunity for me to rise. If you're afraid to fail, then you're probably going to fail. There was once a day that I would pray for you, I'd go and miss me.